Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our uh, latest lecture session. So I believe we have been uh, discussing acids and bases in great detail and looking at, uh, we started looking at a few applications, right? I believe we started looking at, uh, you know, estimating the pH and the aqueous phase concentration of a particular, uh, what do we say, acetic acid based example, I guess, right? And then the second example I believe we looked at was when we had the relevant base, right? With just the estate or sodium estate there. And then uh, we are going to move on, I guess, to a bit more complex systems, as in how do we go about evaluating the system when you have, let's say, uh, volume, particular volume of one particular solution and another volume of another solution. So I want to know what's going to be the case or what are the relevant aqueous uh, equilibrium concentrations of the relevant species, right, of this mixture. So again, I have beaker 1 and beaker 2, various constituents in both the beakers, and I want to know what's the relevant uh, aqueous concentrations at equilibrium for this mixture, right. So again, before we go further, let us uh, quickly have a look at what we discussed earlier. So I believe we looked at ionization fractions, and what are these ionization fractions? They will give you an idea about, right, the fraction of that particular uh, protonate or deprotonate form over the fraction of it over the total acid, right. So in that case, I believe we are going to now look at an example or, re or refresh our memory with respect to an example we looked at previously. So we are going to look at the triprotic acid, right. So here we have an example of triprotic acid and that is H3PO4. So three protons and thus triprotic. So again, it can uh, more or less end up or dissociate into H2PO4 minus plus H plus and thus H2PO4 can again dissociate into H plus and HPO4 now 2 minus or negative charge, 2 negative charge obviously and HPO4 2 minus can further dissociate into H plus and PO4 3 minus, right. So it can give a total of 1, 2, 3, it as H3PO4 can donate 3 protons depending upon the pH obviously, right. So you can't just say H3PO4 is a triprotic acid. So let us say I can use that uh, to adjust my uh, pH based on the assumption that the phosphoric acid is going to dissociate itself in such a way that you are going to have release of 3 moles of H plus for 1 mole of phosphoric acid, right. That is not the case because now with your background, you know that H plus is released, right, depending on the pH and also the pKa of that particular compound, right. So it depends upon pH and pKa, only then can you know how many moles of H plus will dissociate from the parent acid. So let us look at our example here again. So I believe here we have phosphoric acid, right, and here we have the ionization fraction on the y axis and we have pH on the x axis. Phosphoric acid can dissociate or you know uh, donate 3 protons in total depending on the pH. So here we end up having 3 pKa values, right, and I think they are 2.3, I think 6.7 or 7, I am not sure, I need to check that I guess, and 12.2 or 12.3, anyway, approximate values here. So uh, what do we have here? We have 3 pKa values, right. So you know that when pH is less than pKa, the system is going to, the system as in the acid is going to stay in its protonated form. So the H plus is not going to dissociate, right. As it approaches the pKa value, it as the system approaches the pKa value or the pH approaches the pKa value, you are going to have dissociation, right. And at the pKa value, what do you, what would you observe? You observe that the deprotonated form is going to be equal in concentration to its relevant protonated form, right. So that is what you are going to see here. So at this particular pKa value or the pKa1 and I look at the ionization fraction that is equal to 0.5 here and what does that mean? The concentration of H3PO4 and H2PO4 minus is are going to be equal when the pH of the solution is equal to the pKa1 which is 2.3, right. And then more or less as you move to your right or keep increasing the pH or you keep moving away or further higher from the pKa value, what do you observe? You observe that most of the particular acid would stay in its deprotonated form. What does that mean? So when the pH is greater than pKa, the acid will be able to dissociate and donate the proton, right? So that is the key here, more or less pKa. 
And again in this context, we now know that P k will give us an idea about the relative strength or uh, weakness of the acid. Again strength and weakness are relative terms or subject to uh, terms, right. So, you want to be able to quantify that or be objective. So, you are always going to look at P k a, right. So, someone asks you what is the, how can you know uh, let us say a particular acid is uh, strong or weak. You would say you are going to look at the P k a value, right. So, in this case you have it is triprotic. So, we have 3 P k a values and that is what we highlighted here. So, at each P k a value the relevant uh, protonated and deprotonated forms are going to be equal in concentration and that is what you see here in this graph, right. So, this is the speciation diagram let us say. This is the speciation diagram I, ca I call this the speciation diagram, right. And again same case here with respect to pKa3 it is going to be at HPO4 2 minus and PO4 3 minus, right. So, again uh, let us move on. So, now we are talking about ionization fractions, right. And for a triprotic acids, acid you are going to have 4 each one for each of the species. So, that is going to be H3PO4 by the total acid, acid total. And what is the total acid obviously? Some of the concentration of all the 3 species or all the 4 species pardon me at equilibrium and we know that the relevant 4 species are going to be H3PO4, H2PO4 minus, PO4 3 minus and HPO4 2 minus. This is the total acid here, right. This is the denominator here and same case you are going to have H2PO4 minus by total acid, HPO4 2 minus by the total acid and PO4 3 minus by the total acid. Again, so we uh, discussed this, right. So, what does alpha naught give an idea about? It gives an idea about what fraction of your total acid is present as H3PO4. And if you look at alpha 3, what will that give us an idea about? It will uh, let you know what fraction of your total acid is present as its most deprotonated form or as PO4 3 minus, right. So, once you have your compound right as in what does that mean? Once you know your compound it means you know your relevant pK value and let us say you know the pH of the solution that uh, you are looking at right. You can automatically calculate alpha naught 1, 2 and 3 or you know depending upon if it is diprotic it is going to be just alpha naught, alpha 1 and alpha 2 right. Monoprotic just alpha naught and alpha 1 and so on and so forth and I believe we looked at the relevant derivation we are not going to go through that in detail. But obviously, the relevant ionization fractions are going to depend upon H plus or pH and Ka or the pKa, right. So, we are done with that and so let us move on to our next example, right. We are looking at different recipe problems as in you add something and in general we looked at the first example was HEAC such that the concentration was 10 power minus 3 molar and how do we go about this system? How do we calculate the pH? How do we calculate the concentrations of the compounds at equilibrium, right? So, there are two ways one by hand, and in general, we use component balance, and this almost always works, not almost always, pardon me, this always works, right? So, even if you come across, uh, let us say, you know, uh, different methods out there, this is the uh, fundamental, uh, what do we say, method or the basic method which would work always now. There might be shortcuts. But in general as with shortcuts they are applicable to only a particular uh, scenario or such. But the component balance in general when you are trying to look at let us say or trying to estimate what is the uh, concentration of particular compound at equilibrium let us say in general component balance will always work. And then uh, the other way was obviously to use the software VMintec and we were comparing our results and we were also trying to guess at our particular pH in general so that we develop our intuition, right. You also want to be able to uh, what do we say develop the intuition with respect to being able to estimate the parameters, right. At least at this stage you should be able to estimate at least the pH, I mean depending upon the complexity of the system obviously and also at least if you have the pH you should now be able to uh, what is estimate once you given the pK value the relevant fraction or percentage of the protonated and the deprotonated forms, right of the acid and base anyway. So, let us move on I guess, let us look at the example that we have for uh, today. So, we are going to look at a mixing problem, a 
right and thus mixing problem is that you have 200 ml or volume V1 and it is 10 power minus 3 molar HAC or acetic acid and the second one is 300 ml and let us go with 2 into 10 power minus 3 molar NAAC sodium acetate right. So, unlike earlier case uh, where we were looking at just an individual uh, what we say solution right or independent solutions. Now, we are have a, a relatively complex case I mean not much more complex once we look at it obviously. Uh, so, you have two solutions and different constituents and you are mixing them up and you want to know the pH and the relevant equilibrium concentrations right. So, let us see how we go about that let us see. So, the first aspect is that you know obviously all the other aspects such as species what are they obviously again HAC and what else please AC minus H plus OH minus and NA plus they are going to stay the same we looked at relevant examples in the earlier uh, classes and the components too I guess will be the same in this case H plus AC minus and NA plus and then you are going to also look at the tableau right you are also going to look at the tableau and in general you will need to write the formation equations, but once we have the relevant expertise let us say you can try to skip the uh, formation equations, but in general until you are uh, relatively acquainted with the system or the process here that we are discussing I would suggest that you continue uh, with uh, writing down or jotting down the formation equations and then using that as a base to write your tableau or come up with your tableau right. Because if you mess up your total component concentrations or balances pardon me if you mess up your total component balances you are going to mess up your whole system right. So, that is a key aspect and that is one reason why I suggest that you take it easy there right. So, the tableau and such so tableau again we know that is H plus AC minus and NA plus I can skip NA plus because I did not list any other species other than NA plus itself that has NA plus. So, I can skip that if I want to because it plays uh, no further role in my particular system right and these are my species and we see that H plus 1 0 1 minus 1 and 0 1 1 0 0 0 and a plus only as any plus and here is the key though. So, what are the uh, how do I come up with uh, my recipe species now. Uh, so, keep in mind that unlike one of the previous examples we do not have just one solution and two different compounds we have two different solutions of two different volumes and we are mixing them together right. So, that is the whole aspect here. So, how do we go about that now right. So, let us look at that now. So, here you have V 1 and V 2 right volumes two different volumes and so obviously again the key is that you want to conduct a balance right you want to look at the mixture, but the case is that you need to look at a, a variable that is conservative right. So, for example, can I connect the balance on H plus you know concentration of H plus plus volume into concentration of H plus H plus 1 H plus 2 is equal to volume 3 into concentration of H plus at 3. No, I mean if I was able to do that obviously you know I can do away with all these aspects right if I can directly connect the balance on H plus no why is that because we are not just adding two solutions at different pH right. Uh, we are we also have various acid and base or conjugate acid and base species. So, they can either take up the acid I mean H plus or donate the H plus. So, you cannot do a balance on H plus it is not a conservative quantity right and same case you cannot do a balance on pH either right. So, obviously you need to go through the uh, component balance based uh, solution. So, what is the conservative quantity here? So, obviously again it depends upon the components or if you look at the components they obviously why are we choosing them they are conservative quantities right. So, what did we mention now the H right the total H is going to stay the same it can stay in HAC it can stay in H plus or be consumed by OH minus, but the total H plus right or total H is always going to stay the same and same case with that acetate ion it can either be in HAC or in the form of acetate ion or let us say if it can form a complex we are going to look at that in the later classes, but still right the total estate is going to stay the same 
right. So that is what we are looking at, right. So obviously when we do the balance, we are going to look at uh, balancing a uh, uh, conservative quantity. The key is that it needs to be a conservative quantity. So here we are going to look at two balances, one with respect to H total and then other with respect to estate total and H total, uh, what is that going to be I guess? So V1 into H total 1 plus V2 H total 2 will be equal to volume of the mixture into the H total of the mixture and same case here V1 H not H here pardon me, now we are connecting the mass balance on the estate total, estate total 1 plus V2 into estate total 2 is going to be equal to volume of the mixture into estate total of the mixture. So, once I can calculate the total uh, what do we say uh, component in the mixture, I can use that as my recipe species here right and then I can proceed with the answer. So, obviously I need to conduct the uh, mass balance here first with respect to just the mixtures. So, let us see let us plug in the values and see what we have here and so V1 uh, let us say this is my solution 1 and this is my solution 2 V1 and V2. So, I have V1 as 200 ml into what is the H total in your particular uh, volume 1 that is going to be equal to as you know 1 times 10 power minus 3 1 into 10 power minus 3 right. So, the units I am going to use the same units ml and molar so we can come up with that that is uh, okay there plus V2, V2 is 300 ml, 300 ml right into H total. So, H total here and here the key is that there is no contribution there right, so it is going to be 0. So, NAAC there is no contribution, the second particular solution that we have here has just sodium estate right, is there a, so uh, can it contribute to your H? No. So, that is why we are going to have H total in our second solution as being equal to 0 right. So, that is going to be equal to volume of the mixture into H total of the mixture and as we know volume of the mixture is going to be 500 ml right and therefore H total of the mixture is going to be equal to 2 by 5 into 10 power minus 3 molar right that is what we have here and that is going to be equal to 20 by 5 5 4 into 10 power minus 4 molar right. So, that is the H total of the mixture right and that is what you are going to balance it out here when you do the H total balance on your particular system right. And so, let us move on and we are also need to obviously calculate the estate total right. Again that is a conservative quantity, so we are going to uh, connect the balance on the conservative quantity again. So, here we have the balance with respect to estate total, let us plug in the values please. So, the volume 1 is 200 ml into, so let me write down the units just to be on the safer side ok, I messed it up earlier, so I am going to write down the units in a much more apparent manner this time, so that the people who are trying to follow it can do so, right. So, here in the first earlier case I used the volume for uh, what the units for ml always, so that will balance out and so the other two cases I use molar concentrations, so that is why my answer to is going to be in the units of uh, molar units I guess, right. So, again here we are doing to do the same with respect to estate, so 200 ml into uh, and what do I have here? estate 1 estate here into 10 power minus 3 molar plus what is this volume of the second solution it is 300 ml, 300 ml into and estate contribution here is again 1 times 2 into 10 power minus 3 molar that is going to be equal to 500 ml which is the total volume 200 plus 300 into the estate total of the mixture right. So, let us see what this can turn out to be estate total of the mixture will probably turn out to be I guess I have the key here to be 1.6 into 10 power minus 3 molar right. So, that is what I have here. So, here now I have the estate total of the mixture and I also have H total of the mixture. So, again uh, the key here is that you cannot just what do we say uh, connect the balance with respect to H plus, why is that H plus is not conservative right, H plus ion right the proton can be either taken up by the estate ion or be released by the HAC because you do not know what the final pH is going to be right. 
So that is the reason why you can't just do the balance on uh, H plus or pH obviously and then you know use that to calculate your relevant variables. So that is going to give you an erroneous answer at least by now we should be able to understand that. So we are only going to do the balance on the conservative quantities which are H total and H state total and then plug that in using our mass balance not mass balance pardon me the component balance. So let us now put this in and we have H total to be what now please we have that we just calculate that. 4 into 10 power minus 4 molar and 1.6 into 10 power minus 3 molar. So, let us now go back to Vmintech right and I guess uh, again to refresh your memory Vmintech is a software that we use or you know free to download software. So, if anyone has not done that yet I uh, strongly urge you to uh, do so right it is a free to download software again and pretty uh, user friendly too. So, we are going to go ahead with uh, uh, going to use Vmintech to be able to solve it. So, by hand I guess we are also going to look at briefly how to solve that by hand. Uh, I believe we discussed that in detail in the la earlier classes we are just going to have a couple of minutes at that. And so, if I move on to this particular case, so I need to choose show organic compounds why is that because I have estate which is an organic compound estate and I believe the concentration was uh, what is it now 1.6 into 10 power minus 3 if I am not wrong and let me choose the units of millimolar to make it easier for me and so I am going to say the concentration units here are 1.6 millimolar I am going to add that to the list so that is the key here and then the next aspect is to choose H total and A B H total and what did we calculate that as 4 into 10 power minus 4 molar I guess right that is what we calculated it. So, it is going to be uh, 0.4 millimolar. So, 0.4 millimolar units here. So, here I am adjusting the units here. So, add to list, right? Let me also add uh, Na plus. So, that is something we did not uh, calculate. So, let me go ahead and try to calculate that. So, let us go back to that and let us move on to a new slide. So, 1.6 and 4 into 10 power minus 4. So, we got that right. So, we also need to plug in Na total right and that is going to be V1 into Na total 1 plus V2 Na total 2 by V1 plus V2 right and what were our solutions here they were HAC. So, the first case it is going to be 200 ml into 0 because volume 1 it just had HAC. HAC has no source of uh, sodium in it right or is not a source for sodium and V2 looks like we had NAAC right and if my memory serves me right it is 2 into 10 power minus 3 molar units right. So, let us see if we are on the right track here uh, 2 into 10 power minus 3 molar yes. So, that is going to be plus volume 2 is 300 ml into and your total is going to be 2 into 10 power minus 3 molar by what is it here please 500 ml right. So, that is going to be equal to uh, what now 3 by 5 into or 6 by 5 pardon me into 10 power minus 3 molar units. So, 60 by 5 so let us say 1.2 into 10 power minus 3 molar units right. So, hopefully my calculations are right you can correct me if I am wrong uh, hopefully I am right though uh, 5 12 yeah looks right and uh, let us go back plug in the relevant values here again. So, here we need to plug in the relevant values and where is my key here. So, it is 1.2 millimolar and I am going to add that to the list I am going to confirm that I put in the right values and I believe H total was 0.4 millimolar, H state was 1.6 and Na plus was 1.2 right. So, that is expected because in only only in one solution did we have a source of uh, H plus or H right that was in the first solution that way at a lower volume that is why you see that H total is relatively less compared to the H state total. H state was present in both volume 1 and volume 2 that is why you see that it has a higher value here. And again same case with sodium it is only present in the second solution I believe, but that is uh, it has a greater contribution because it is I believe the volume is greater and also the concentration of that NAAC was also higher. 
So, let us go back to the main menu and let us try to see if okay, pH calculated from mass balance ionic strength to be calculated and so on temperature is 25 and let us run we mean tech right and now first let us look at pH and let us try to understand this uh, later on pH is 5.2 we will come back to that and what else do we have here please okay so we see the relevant concentrations here these what are these concentrations again please so this page with respect to the results page will give you an idea about what now the concentrations of your species are the equilibrium concentrations right of all the compounds that are present so i believe uh, we have been neglecting naoh right and sodium acetate and why is that in general they wouldn't be present in your solution at higher concentration so i guess that's what you see naoh remarkably less 10 power minus 12 and this is 10 power minus 6 so what does that mean it's almost two orders of magnitude less than almost other the compounds but compared to oh minus sodium acetate is uh, relatively higher so maybe we can look at that later but that's not going to affect your answer in general right so again as we go along i guess as you use women tech it will help you in uh, developing your understanding about what species are going to be relatively important let's say for example i in general with my background i uh, i took the or had the assumption or went through with the assumption that sodium acetate is not going to be at significant uh, concentration. So, that is what I still uh, stand for because it is still 10 power minus 6 compared to acetate at 10 power minus 3 concentration and uh, the acetic acid at 10 power minus 4 levels right. So, again let us uh, come back to it and we have the pH and the relevant uh, equilibrium concentrations and obviously the activity and here we have the ionic strength here yes. And obviously, the charge difference is going to be 0 especially if you give a right uh, what do we say uh, component balance the charge difference needs to be 0. If it if it is not 0 what does that mean that you gave uh, erroneous uh, what do we say inputs right. So, anyway I will go back to looking at the species distribution and here what will this give me an idea about for example, I have the uh, total H state let us say I want to know what fraction of it is present as. Uh, which particular species let us say. So, that is what I am going to look at here. So, as we know and uh, pKa was what is it now 4.7 or is 4.7 for acetic acid and for this particular example or solution we got our equilibrium pH to be 5.5 right. So, pKa was or is 4.7 pKa uh, pH now was 5.5. So, the pH is greater than the pKa what does that mean? It means that most of your particular uh, what do we say acid base system is going to stay in its conjugate base or the deprotonated form. So, that is what you see here 75 percent of that particular state is staying as a state or the deprotonated form and only 25 percent is staying as the protonated form and why is that because the pH is greater than the pKa right. And again a minor fraction very minor or negligible fraction less than 0.1 percent is staying as sodium acetate and again same case with sodium uh, salt it is staying as sodium itself 99.9 percent and the other uh, particular species can be neglected right this, this is what we have. Uh, so, let us go back to our particular case back to main output menu input menu back to input menu and so on. So, here I guess uh, pardon me I was trying to look at the output files. So, pH is 5.2. So, let us try to uh, uh, look at the system and have an understanding about how this came about right. So, let us look at what we had. We had 200 ml of your acid HAC and 300 ml and the concentration I believe was 10 power minus 3 molar units and 300 ml of NAAC 2 into 10 power minus 3 molar units. So, the first aspect we need to look at is the relevant volumes and the relevant concentrations. So, again what I am trying to do here is I guess there is something that I should have done earlier. Uh, we should be able to uh, come up with a good enough guess with respect to what the pH would be right. We are trying to develop our intuition right. So, let us look at that. This is a mixture of a compound unlike uh, the earlier cases we had just one particular solution. So, anyway we now have two variables to look at not just the concentrations, but also the volumes of the relevant mixtures. So, if I look at it here uh, volume 1 is less volume 2 is greater. Uh, not a huge difference, but still considerable difference right. Uh, and then here the concentration of your acid is less concentration of the conjugate base is more. 
So first keep in mind that if you are using the same uh, or the conjugate acid base pair and the concentrations are similar, what would you expect now? So you have the acid and the base or the protonated and deprotonated forms and if their concentrations are equal, what would that mean? That means the pH is going to be equal to pKa, right? So but that is not the case here, but we know that the concentrations are not way too high or not way too off or not way too different from each other. So what does that mean now? So we can still ballpark it saying that it is going to be around 4.7 or the pKa of our case. But we now want to be able to take a call with respect is it going to be less than 4.7 or is the pH going to be less than 4.7 or greater than 4.7. So how do we do that? We need to look at the relevant quantities of your acid or the conjugate or the deprotonated form, right? So here obviously it is easier uh, for us because 200 ml of HAC and that to at lower concentration. But here we have 300 ml of the deprotonated form and that to at higher concentration but the concentrations are not way too far off and same case with volume. So we can estimate that uh, the pK, pH is certainly going to be near pKa right which is 4.7 and because we have AC minus being added in greater quantities let us say or the base being added in greater concentrations compared to the acid or HAC or the protonated form right. What are we having here? We are ha saying that deprotonated form we are adding in a greater concentration compared to the protonated form, right? This is relatively lower, right? So uh, this particular deprotonated form can take in H plus. So what does that mean when the deprotonated form can take in H plus? Let's say, uh, right? Or uh, accept a proton now. So if you remove H plus from the solution, that means your pH is going to increase. So I guess we can take a call saying that I guess we can do a slight uh, uh, calculation here. Uh, back of the envelope calculation here, but I am going to skip that. So we can say that the pH is going to be greater than 4.7 and maybe without calculation say it is going to be around 5.2 or so and I believe the answer that we had was okay 5.2 that is way too close an estimate at least greater than 4.7 or near 5. So anyway the answer turned out to be 5.22 I guess right. So uh, that is what we have here. So again uh, we will wrap up uh, today's session with a very brief summary of what we discussed. So here in today's class we looked at a case where we have two different solutions, uh, right? two different components. So you want to mix them up together and find the uh, relevant concentrations of the mixture now. right? But the case here is that you uh, need to conduct the balance right? with respect to uh, mixture 1 and mixture 2 or solution 1 and solution 2 on a conservative quantity. But is H plus conservative? No, right? it can transform, right? it can go into HAC, right? why AC minus can take it up or HEAC that is in your solution can donate the proton and H plus can increase, right. So you want to choose a quantity that is conservative, does not change, right and what is that and those are the components or H total and H state total and that is why we took looked at V1 into H total 1 plus V2 into H total 2 is equal to volume of the mixture into H total of the mixture and you can go ahead with that, right. So again with that I will end uh, today's session and I look forward to uh, meeting you again next time I guess.